Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be exploring CSS. Now, CSS is what you write to style your websites so you can give them any sort of visual character, whether from moving things left to right, changing the color, any sort of website that you see on the internet has been made visually possible with CSS. Because of that, CSS is one of the most important fundamental languages you can learn. And the best part is, is it's a lot of fun to write because it's very visual. When you make a change, you can see it on your website immediately upon refreshing. So let's get started right now. So in the last video, we referred to HTML as the language that builds the structural and content aspect of your website. As you can see, we have an H1 and a paragraph tag here that are used to display our text. However, those tags really gave us no control over how these things look. The browser picked the font and it picked the color and it picked the spacing and the size of the text. Now by default, browsers have a certain set of default styles that they use to make all your websites look the same. In fact, without the browser's help, an H1 and a paragraph would look the exact same. However, we can find out that the browser is applying some default styles to these elements simply by right clicking on it and then selecting inspect element. Now this will bring up a menu that you may have never seen before. This is called the DevTools section of Chrome. Now DevTools is something that you want to become very familiar with because not only does it show you the HTML source right here, but it also shows you what styles are being applied and it even shows you a JavaScript console. If your console isn't showing up, you can always hit escape to make it show up or you can select it down here and hit escape to make it disappear. Now there's a whole lot of other tabs in here, uh, such as network sources, timeline, profiles, and even some more to help you really understand how your websites work, but these are all advanced debugging functionality and we won't need them in this series. Now as I said before, there are some default styles being applied to this text. As you can see, we have some code right here. Now this code is CSS, or cascading style sheets. CSS allows you to apply styles to your elements, and you can do so in a number of ways. You'll notice that this is H1, and then it has a curly bracket, and then a closing curly bracket. And between that are some statements. We have font size is equal to two Ms. It has this display block. It has some margins after and before. It has some font weight on it. Now the font weight is just making this bold. The font size is making this two Ms. Now an M is a relative text size, which we won't quite go over yet. However, you can play around with some non-permanent style changes in here simply by clicking in this element style area. From here, we can type font hyphen size. And then after the semicolon, we can say something like 100. Then we can use the unit pixels. So by having this font size 100, it's now made this font size to 100 pixel. However, you'll notice that if we hit command R or refresh this page, that style that we changed here is gone. It is non-permanent. So any changes that you make within your inspect element aren't going to remain there. So let's figure out how we can in fact change this text and have it be permanent. So we can do so within our CSS in our HTML file. However, in this video, we're gonna show you how you can just add CSS to your HTML as is. So we can have a new tag, which is the style tag, and we can close that up like so. Now, you'll notice this is in the head of the document. Now in between these style tags, the opening and closing one, we can actually write that code as we saw it in the inspect element. Let's tab back to our browser, and you remember it was the name of the element, then open and close curly brackets, and then our definitions in between. So we can now modify our h1 simply by typing h1, and then we can have an open and closing curly bracket like so. And in between here, we can type the property. So the property we want to change is font hyphen size. And then we're going to have a colon. And then we're going to have the value, which was 100 pixels. And then you finish it off with a semicolon. So we have the element, then the brackets, the property, and then the value. Now let's save this. Let's come back to our page and refresh. You notice that this time, we have our font size, it was 100 and it's sticking there. In addition, 
If we look over in your inspect element, you see h1 font size is equal to 100. Again, we can modify this, and you can see I'm just holding the down arrow, it's shrinking it, and upon page refresh, it's always gonna go back to the style that we've declared in our files. Now let's remove this font size 100 because we don't actually want this to be 100 pixels. However, a good idea might be to make this a color. Let's go ahead and give this a new color. We can say color and then colon. And now the color we want to define can be given several ways. We can give it an actual color name in plain English. Let's say red and let's save this and refresh. Now it's very red. Now this is the default red color that your browser provides. And there's hundreds of so default colors that your browser is able to read that you can look up. However, the better way to define your colors is by hexadecimal. Now hexadecimal is a six digit code preceded by a pound sign. So we can say pound and then we want to give it a color. Now it's RGB so we can say 00FF00. Let's save this and see what color we get. When we refresh, you can see it's green. Remember how I said it's RGB, which stands for red, green, blue? Uh, if you'll notice, the first two values are the red, the second two values are the green, and the last two values are the blue. Zero, it's absolutely nothing. So a total absence of color is going to be black. So if we change this to six zeros instead, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's going to be black. And because it's in hexadecimal, it goes all the way from zero to nine. And then from nine, it goes from A to F, F being total white. So if we have this be a whole bunch of whites, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can see that it's completely white. Anywhere in between, we can add in a couple of zeros. We get this teal, the cyan color. Remember we had green here. Um, again, we can add two Fs at the end and you should see this being blue. Now, because of this, there's a ton of combinations here. We can change the second F to be zero and we get a little bit different shade of a blue. In fact, if we change this to something like A, it's even another shade of a blue, a little bit darker. Maybe AA and it's still darker. Now you could really just sort of play around here and as long as the values are from zero to nine and A through F, you should be able to see a change in the color here. Now you would never wanna to try to guess your color via hexadecimal. That's why applications like Adobe Photoshop or Sketch or anything that you're working on, you should be able to get the hexadecimal value out of that using a tool like the eyedropper. For instance, the color 564363 is a shade of purple that we use at Level Up Tutorials. Now, I didn't come up with this by typing in the hex code for this. I used it in a visual editor and pulled that color directly from the editor. So as you can see, we have our first styling being done to our website using our very first CSS in our HTML. In fact, if we would like to keep this sticking here, we could actually come here directly into our inspect element, our dev tools. We could copy this entire line. We can come back to our HTML and we can paste this in here. Now this is in here, I can then refresh and you can see it's permanent. So we're off to a good start. We have our first HTML code. We have our first CSS code. And in the next video, we're gonna learn a little bit more about how and why you do things a specific way with HTML and CSS as we move our styles into their own file. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.